Okay, hi there everybody. Um, just got some of my parts in the mail today. Uh, just doing a quick overview of the EVGA X58 for the Win 3 motherboard. Um, just got this in the mail. Been looking on YouTube and all over the internet. There's not really many people that have done any sort of overviews or technical specifications of this board. So basically I'm just going to do a quick one. Um, basically it's an X58 board. Um, it fits the LGA 1366 processors, which is all your Core i7 line. Um, so your sockets right here. You've got six RAM DIMM slots. Um, on the packaging it says they're all rated for um, 1600 megahertz but this board is very capable of overclocking um, so it runs on a uh, ICH 10R chipset with your X58 Northbridge so next thing we'll look at is the power connectors on the board you have one CPU 8 pin connector 124 pin motherboard connector and that's pretty much it on the board for now um, it's not like the Asus Rampage 3 Extreme how it has the Molex connectors on it because this board is only capable of three-way SLI or Crossfire okay next thing I'm gonna be talking about is the uh, PCI Express um, basically these three gray slots here are your PCI Express connectors. Um, they run off the X58 chipset, so you're not going to be having much uh, downstepping of the speed. Um, if you run single card, you've got 16x. Dual card, you've got 16x, 8x. And if you run triple, you have 16x, 8x, 8x. Okay, so next thing we're going to talk about, I'm going to turn this board around is your SATA connectors. These red ports here, you've got two SATA 6 gigabyte per second, which is SATA 3. Then you've got four SATA 2, which is SATA 3 gigabytes per second. And you've got another two SATAs facing off the board, which are also SATA 2, 3 gigabyte per second. You also, down here, have one IDE connector and that rounds out your connections okay so next thing on the list is your uh, other connectors other than PCI Express so you've got a PCI Express 1 slot here in between two of the PCI Express 16X and then you've got two PCI slots um, it's a really nice layout how they've got this um, basically your first PCI Express connector is one slot down from your normal location so your first PCI slot will be empty then you've got if you are running it like I am I'm gonna be having uh, SLI with a dedicated physics card you're gonna have two slots for your first card two slots for your second card and a third slot or a fifth slot for your third card then you'll also have one more slot down here okay so next couple of the high-end features of the board um, like I said before this board is a overclocking motherboard it has uh, lots of phases of power um, I've got some crazy overclocks on this. I've got my CPU up over 4.3 gigahertz. Um, I'm running water cooling, so it's not really a factor with the heat. But um, your Northbridge cooler is a big, beefy cooler. You've got all sorts of fins right in here. They're rather uh, spaced apart, but they're pretty heavy fins, so you're going to get really nice airflow. Your MOSFET cooler right here has a heat pipe coming up through with fins. Um, 
the MOSFETs do get a little bit warmer on this board, but nothing too crazy, like maybe 65 Celsius. Um, as we turn the board over here, this little square is a LED post light. Um, it reads out two digits, um, letters and numbers, depending on what stage of the post it's in. And uh, it will track down whatever problems you have. Your front panel connectors are right down here. You've got a clear CMOS button right here and up on the back panel. And you have a power and reset button. These are uh, higher end uh, components because this is a higher end enthusiast board. Okay, one thing I'd like to talk about, um, on the north bridge, you might be able to see there are two holes on the north bridge cooler. What those two holes are for is to mount a 40 millimeter fan that blows up through the north bridge. So I'll just demonstrate that now. Um, it's just a, a scythe 40 millimeter chipset fan pick it up for about five bucks and these holes are tapped for uh, metric number three so um, in my case with my fan I've just got these two metric number three screw screws they're uh, 20 millimeters long I live in Canada so it wasn't that hard to get a hold of if you're in the US who knows and all you do you put the fan over those holes and you will be able to put these two screws in and your fan will be secured and it will pull air through and out the top of the chipset so just to get an idea of how that looks nice and clean and what I did with these wires you can just tuck them underneath the PCI Express slots a little bit tight to get it through this first one because it's butted up but once you get it under the first one you can just run it down like that so yeah okay so next thing I'd like to talk about is your fan headers um, this board has a whole bunch of fan headers. You have one here, one here, two here, and your CPU fan header up over here. Um, plus, all these fan headers are uh, they're uh, voltage controlled through the BIOS, even the three pins, so you can modify the voltage and keep your system running nice and quiet. Uh, next thing I'll be talking about is the um, headers on the motherboard. So you've got two USB headers here, your front panel headers, you have another uh, firewire header, then you've got a serial header, and your audio headers over here. Um, I'm not too fond of where they put the USB headers because uh, potentially with your second dual slot video card it could come in contact here with your headers but these headers are pretty low like they're the same height as these capacitors and the connectors are really low so you're going to be able to bend them over beside the south the south bridge and uh, run them up and away um, so the last thing on my list we're going to turn this around and show you the rear panel IO area so what you've got You've got a PS2 keyboard port, two USB 2.0s, clear CMOS button, EV bot, which is an EVGA proprietary connector for their EV bot um, overclocking tool, I guess you'd call it, um, two USB 3.0, six more USB 2.0s, uh, Firewire, dual gigabit Ethernet, 
and 7.1 audio. So this was a overview of the EVGA X58 for the Win 3 motherboard. Uh, I hope I've answered most of your questions or curiosities. Um, if anybody needs any extra help, just contact me and I will be happy to help you out. Okay, thank you very much.